In this video, I'm going to talk folks through some of the basics of AI, more specifically just using a nav mesh to get a player moving around and also interacting a little bit with some NPCs. Now, to start off with, one thing you're going to want to take into consideration here is yes, it is technically artificial intelligence, but it isn't artificial intelligence what I'm showing you here from the standpoint that it's actually going to be able to make decisions based on a player reference or things along those lines. This is just to get another NPC moving around with the player in the game environment. One of the easiest ways to do this is to use a nav mesh bounds volume. This maps out for you and cuts off as far as areas that the NPC can move around in. To start out, I'm going to use the base third player character environment. And what I'm going to do is under the volumes, you may have to scroll down, but there's something called the nav mesh bound volume. So if I just click and drag this into the environment here. Now, because I've worked with them before, you can see this green area here that's denoting that that's a safe spot for the NPC character to move around in. If yours is not showing up, you want to hit P as in paintbrush on the keyboard, and that will turn this on and off for you. Now the big step with the nav mesh is you want to make sure that it extends through the entire area that you would actually like the non-player character to be able to move about in. So you can see here as I'm repositioning, the nav mesh is kind of recalculating for me where the player can move. So you can actually see here, I'm pulling this up a little bit, and for the most part, kind of got most of the area here. So again, green is good. That means that the player character is going to be able to move around. Now, the next step, however, is we need to get a avatar moving around here. And we're actually gonna build this off of the third person blueprint here. Right now, we already have a character that is ready to go as far as movements are concerned. And we can go in and just delete the events based on this blueprint. So what I'm gonna do here first is under my content window, I'm gonna make a new folder and I'm gonna call this maybe uh, oh, NPC demo. I'm gonna go back to the third person BP and under the blueprint folder where it says third person character, I'm going to drag and drop this over into NPC demo. And Unreal is going to ask me, do I want to move or copy here? I want to make a copy. I don't want to actually edit or move this third person character because remember, this is actually acting for the player themselves so that they can also interact. So let's come in now and I'm going to double click and I'm going to go ahead and tab this on Unreal here to do a quick save and then let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing here. So the big edits that we're going to have to make here to start out with is the event graph. If I come over to the left hand side you can see I have a lot of inputs for the graph here but the thing is is because this is going to be a non-player character I actually don't need any of this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of it by dragging and selecting and then I'm going to go ahead and delete. So now what that's given me now is a fresh space to start working in as far as the overall layout here. Now there's going to be two things that we're going to do is we are going to create an event that is going to be pretty much the randomization of our overall layout and design for the NPC to interact with the world. And then we're going to call that event and just say whenever the game begins, start running the overall event. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with adding a custom event. Now we can call this whatever we like. I'm going to call it move NPC. And from here now, we got to start structuring as far as the overall location and telling the AI MPC, where can it move to? What type of radius can it work in? So the first thing we have to do is actually get the location. So I'm going to say get actor location. It's actually popping up down here at the bottom. And 
we're going to leave the target as is because this is the NPC. We want it to actually go in and edit that. And then I'm going to right click again. And what I need to get is a random reachable point in the radius. So based on where I place this NPC, it's going to look at the AI nav mesh and it's going to look within a specific radius and say, okay, how far can I move around here and where can I move to? So the actor location is going to be based on the origin, wherever that may be. Now, one thing that folks will forget to do is actually change this radius. If you leave it at zero, the character is just going to stand there because you're not letting it explore or think about a wider area there. I'm going to go ahead and choose 1000 to start off with. That's a pretty good radius. And especially for the level that I have right now, uh, as far as having the walls up, this is a good kind of space setup here. Now, what I'm going to do here next is I've now set up. So, okay, here's my movement, locating the actor with now having set the random reachable points and radius off of the random location here i'm going to go ahead and click and drag now one thing you're going to want to have on is the context sensitive because what we want to do is set the random location to a variable value because by doing so we can now have a connection to that custom event that is now linked into the actor location and the movement on the random points. So the next step here is, so we've started setting up as far as, okay, we're locating our actor, we're telling it to look around, move in a random location, but we actually haven't told it to move. All the NPC is doing right now is just looking around. So now if we go ahead and give it some control as far as artificial intelligence move to, we can now begin the process here of setting a destination, attaching the set for the AI move to. I want to pause here and just briefly talk about both of these. Notice when I set the destination, it removed the XYZ location. Remember, that's because under the set variable here for the random location, it's linking off of that. So instead of having a specific value, we're letting Unreal randomize in a 1000 uh, point radius here where the actor is going to be located. Now regarding the pawn variable, we want to get a reference to itself. So I'm going to go ahead and start typing self. And here you can see under variables, you can get a reference to the self. So I'm just going to push that off to the side there a little bit because the pawn again that we're working with is our actor, which is our NPC. So now that we've set this all up here, we're now ready to continue on as far as actually having the NPC move around. Now I'm also going to take a moment here. Let me tighten this up a little bit so that we're not completely going across the page here. There we go. Now, on the other side of the AI move to, I want to point out a couple of things here. Notice that you have just your standard exec, but then you have on success and on fail. What this is going to do is we need to set this up to execute after X amount of time and then have it move. But then also, if it can't move somewhere, we need to also set up an event so that in case it fails or it can't move to a specific location, such as having a wall in the way, that it rethinks and goes back through and runs through our event here again. So from exact, I'm going to drag out here and we're going to set a delay. Now, by default, the delay is like 0.2 seconds. This is going to be making the NPCs ping pong all over the place. Uh, I normally like maybe two to four seconds, so maybe I'll split the difference this time and do a three. And when it's thought for three seconds, I'm now going to tell it to move the NPC. However, if it can't move, so we're going to give it a second to delay and think. 
and then we're going to have it try to move the NPC again. One thing I would advise is keeping the delay for the fail a little bit shorter. You don't want to have an NPC standing around and having the user wondering what's going on there. So really here we've set up our main event as far as controlling that third player character. But the thing is though, all we've done is made the event. We actually haven't called the event to run at all. So the last step with this is we have to set an event begin play. And from here, we're going to start to tell it to move the NPC. So these are your main elements here. I'm going to compile and I'm going to save. If you are interested, one other thing I like to do, especially if I'm using the third person character blueprint as a default, is I'll come into the viewport here. If you notice under the viewport here, you have the camera reference elements. I don't really need these since I'm not actually going to be following this character. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the cameras out. You don't want to do this on the actual third person player. Instead, what you want to do is do this only on your non-NPC. So I'm going to compile and save. I got my check mark, so that's a good sign. And now what I'm going to do is notice I'm in the NPC demo folder. There's my third person character. I'm just going to click and drag and add it into my game environment. So now if I go ahead and hit play, I still have my character set up. And there you can see how the player character, the NPC, is now moving around to random locations. This is probably the most basic of AI that you can get regarding Unreal. There are other scripts that you can add as far as if the player, you know, for instance, if the NPC sees the player, they can start chasing them or they can start shooting at them if you had more of your UI involved. But this is a good starting point to get you going as far as working with the nav mesh.